This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome everyone to Monday, February 7th, 2022, uh, meeting of the county commissioners. At this time, we'll have our invocation by Mr. David Foster from the Blading Baptist Association. And after that, Mr. Martin will lead us in the flag. Please stand, please. Let's go Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, I pray tonight, Lord, that we honor you. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our service and our fellowship. But I pray for those that are elected officials in this place tonight, Lord, to recognize their need for you and for guidance. Father, for those interested members of the community that are here tonight for different reasons, I pray, Lord, that uh, they're able to speak up and speak words that will be encouraging and helpful to the community members. Father, I pray that you help all of us to recognize our need for you, our dependence upon you. Lord, you provide so many, so much for us. You provide us your guidance, your presence, your care, your grace, and your mercy. Lord, that's those things we do not deserve, yet in your goodness, you provide those anyway. Father, help us as we go through tonight and as we go through our life in this place, Lord, serving this community. They will do so for the good of the community, but also, Lord, more than that, to glorify the Father that is in heaven. We thank you, God, for the way that you showed us your love for us through your Son, Jesus Christ. And it's in his holy, precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I think maybe one thing to consent items. I'm going to go for it. Got a motion on the back of the paper. Second by Mr. Cameron. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. I declare open hearing to receive comments regarding the zoning request, pen number 0392-0053-2753. Do we have anyone here to speak in reference to the rezoning? I'll just kind of, you got uh, the information in your packet, but the property, of course, is located on 87 Bypass, 87 Business West. Um, going outside of Elizabethtown. Um, we, the planning board met uh, January 18th at the regular board meeting and we held our public meeting. Uh, we did have three adjoining landowners there and they were in support of the proposal. Uh, I did receive another call last week from a landowner from, she lives in Maryland, but she owns property across the bypass on the other side and she was on um, Glad to see commercial development in Blaine County. So um, no, no opposition. Uh, we do have tonight um, Pope Campbell representing uh, Clark Brothers and their attorney, um, Matt Nichols. And um, he's got a short little uh, PowerPoint that if he drove all the way from Wilmington, you might as well get up and say something. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, sir. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Matt Nichols. I'm an attorney in Wilmington, and I am here tonight representing Clark Brothers. And I appreciate the opportunity to say just a few words. I had a few slides that I think would um, just highlight some of the, the points with the rezoning. And uh, if I may go through those real quickly, I know that the uh, I don't know how to go to take the arrow. But... If you just tell me what. Go to the next slide. I'll okay. Yes, sir. Uh, please, please advance. Uh, yes, sir. I know. I know that the board members are all familiar with the area. Uh, we've got a couple slides showing the property. Next slide, please. And here's a little closer up at 87 and uh, 87 bypass. Uh, next slide, please. And here's just the Google uh, Street Maps view of the intersection of the subject property. Next slide, please. Uh, the current zoning is RA. Next slide, please. And we are um, asking the board to consider a uh, commercial zoning of the property. Um, some of the reasons in support of that, um, I would just point out would be, um, next slide, please. Um, I was going to point out that on the Lane County Future Land Use 
uh, plan, uh, the property is uh, shown under the high density urban place type. That's shown a little closer on the next slide, please. Uh, we sort of highlighted where the property is there uh, in relation to that plan. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, I think this may be noted in the board's packet, but um, that place type encourages commercial uh, in that high density urban area. And next slide, please. And then just a quick summary, we think that for this particular property, a commercial zoning would be uh, a more appropriate designation in that particular location. Uh, it would facilitate future development. It would be consistent with the county's plans and the place type on the future land use map. And we would uh, say that it would support economic growth and investment in the area and creation of jobs and opportunity to bring some commercial goods and services closer to residents. So, with that, very much appreciate your consideration and glad to answer any questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate you coming. Thank you, yes. Thank you, sir. If no one else here to speak, I declare mm -hmm. this rezoning meeting closed. And what's the pleasure of the Motion to approve. Got a motion by Mr. Taylor. Got a second by Mr. Mark Gillespie. Any opposed? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. And the delegation wish to address the Commissioner's Southeastern Community Action Partnership, Sarah Shipman. Good evening. I'm Sarah Shipman. I work with Southeast Community Action Partnership, and we're here tonight to get your approval for our 2022 to 23 application for funding. We serve Blazing, Columbus, Panda, Scotland, Robinson, Brunswick, and Hope County. And our goal is to empower, to improve and empower the lives of the people we serve. So I know you're having your passion, so if anybody have any questions, I'll be glad to answer for you. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, and I want to thank you guys been in the county for several years, have you not? Well, this agency has been in operation for six, four years, but we have different. We don't have third name change since I've been here. Okay. And I've been here 34 years. Okay. And so do we have a lot of users? Do we have a lot of people participate? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And then how do we get the information to to potential um, clients? Well, we collaborate with other agencies in the area. And what we're doing, something new now, we get ready to send out because of COVID. We get ready to send out mailings okay. to each county. You know, we're picking up. Uh, like um, we are, have a staffing issue here. I'm the supervisor for Blaze Run Columbus September. Mm -hmm. And so I've chosen Carton to be my first mailing list. Okay. And we just compare those uh, calls to the post office. Mm -hmm. It's just the beginning. Okay. Yes. So on the other end, other small communities, I'll get out. Yeah, we're going to start going to eat. Okay. Okay. I just so chose Carton. No, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Oh. I'm probably going to take my comment negative, but I don't mean to be a present before you, you do. So I don't quite understand why, the, and it's not probably not your problem, why the state of North Carolina tries to duplicate so much effort. Why aren't they funneling that money into the health department for counties? There's so much duplicate efforts of what y'all doing and what the health department is supposed to be doing. And you don't even have to answer. That's just my comment. <laughs> no, I would like to say I know we got to find jobs. And if they have a job and get a better job, I don't know if that's something that. Oh, we got to employ security out there and see works. Yeah, and we collaborate with them too. I'm just. Got a, I, I didn't want it to be negative. I'm just saying it no, looks like fine. it's just really, really duplicate efforts of what's already in place. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Thanks, Governor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. East, Arc East Arcadia Community regarding East Arcadia Fire Department, Linda Miller, Rhonda Hall, Lillian Graham. Good evening. With your permission, we would like to, Linda, Lillian, and Rhonda would like to yield our time to. The board of directors chair. Jimmy Monroe. Yes. 
Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Timmy Monroe, uh, uh, chairman of the board for East Arcade Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, spend the night. Uh, the fire department is in jeopardy of being closed because uh, we have a fire chief. At this point, we have elected a fire chief, and we're in the process when we want to keep our fire department open. We are taking in new members, new fire chief, and when as chairman, I signed to, because we didn't have a fire chief, and then that caused the commission to close it or in the process of closing it, and we're trying to avoid that. Now, we want to keep the fire department open in East Arcade. We have a chief, we've got new members, uh, we got people that were slack about attending and doing what they needed to do so that the fire department would be uh, positive. But I think that now we have members, we got a chief, and that we could be a positive fire department. And we, I, whoever I need to beg or ask to keep us open, that's what I want to do. Mr. Monroe, let me tell you the way I understand it, the way the law reads. First of all, understand, sir, that we're responsible to the citizens of our county, regardless of what fire district or what area of the county that it is. Uh, it's up to you folks whether you dissolve your corporation or not. But it's our responsibility to make sure that each citizen and homeowner is protected very, very much so with an organization that is qualified and have the equipment necessary to supply the needs that are needed in that area. And when you're talking about new firemen, my understanding is 200 and some hours of training, which would be several months. And the time factor plays a big role in this as far as what we are legally obligated to have to do. Uh, it's no reflection on you or anyone. It's just got caught in the gap that what you have to have to be able to supply what we are required to deliver to the citizens is not in place at this time. And the time factor is the problem. If you get everything in order and get everything up to speed, I can't speak for the commission, but I think we would all entertain listening in the future. But we have to act now based on the needs and the requirements of the county commissioners for fire protection, not only in your area, but any area. And we deal with this in like three locations right now in the county. Mr. Peterson. Mr. Monroe, why do you isolate the the gun? Oh, sir, you can't get a fire chief until the first one resigned, right? We just got his letter two days ago. Right. right. So uh, see how do, how do you plan to to, to, to be a, a, a operating fire department? My understanding is we got to March the first to make the decision on where to how are you going to train your people or how what are you going to do if a fire? Do you want us to contract with them? Do y'all get your stuff together? Um, not being in no way disrespectful, but the people that came back after the, res the resignation of the old fire chief, they're not new people that had never been in a volunteer fire. They have come back. Uh, <clears throat> because I guess with the resignation of the old fire chief, it is not just a no. So, mm -hmm. if I may, can I suggest if if March the first is 
the drop dead deadline. I, I heard that. I'm not absolutely sure. And will y'all get with Nathan and the, 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 the state fire marshal, whoever you need to, and, and see what you need to do and see if you can put it in place? That'd be fine. I don't have a problem you being a fire department. That you continue to be a fire department and you can't provide the services your citizens need until y'all get to that point. May I say something? Yes, ma'am. Excuse me, they came by my house and hit me up. <laughs> Rhonda was supposed to be here instead of me, but her niece had a bad accident. Mm -hmm. So she had to go with them and say, um, we are willing to work with you with whatever's necessary. The fire department today is probably in better shape than it was two or three weeks ago. We've got a viable fire, fire chief who's young, smart, willing to learn. We, the people, we've got many old fire department members who have said they're coming back. They've been to two or three meetings. We, we are doing all that we can. We know what needs to be done. And we are going to work with the um, emergency management of Blake County and the state of North Carolina to do whatever's necessary to get the fire department up and running. We want you to do whatever you have to do. We're not going to fight you. Whatever you have to do until we prove to you that we're ready. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I just think, you said that the problem was you didn't have a chief, um, but obviously that that's an easy fix. Just you know, yep. but equipment, things of that nature. Obviously, that's a much bigger, uh, much more expensive part of the proposal. And understand a lot of the equipment, you know, is in poor state of repair, things of that nature. So I guess we need to know a time frame. If there's a contract with um, Columbus County Fire Departments to to cover, like the chairman said. I mean, you mentioned there was an accident today. If there's an accident tonight and there's a need for a fire truck, you know, you guys have the capability of, of providing that equipment. And how long will it take? You know, we need to make sure if we've got a contract in place that, that there's not a gap, you know, we want to take care of the folks. So. And that's what I said in my opening statement. Uh, we have to do for this period what we have to do to cover our citizens as an obligation to county. When we hire someone, they have to be obviously prepared to handle the needs and whatever is needed at the site of a fire. And um, and that's the question that seems to be coming from our side is we don't think that is there at this time. And, um, and we have to make sure that that is, Mr. Speaks. Mr. Ben, did I go, uh, Mr. Chairman? Okay, Danny, I'm sorry. I was just going to ask, how long has it not been viable as far as the fire department? I'm, or I'm trying to remember back. I know that Mr. Dallas explained to us a plan to get uh, other departments involved, you know, for the homeowners and all the things that go along with the, like, like Mr. Ray is saying, all the things that go along with being insured and, and the protection of the citizens down there. So how long of a gap has there been, I wonder? In other words, where it's not been viable, and then now all of a sudden it is. We had trucks running a month, uh, maybe a month ago, and uh, then our chief is felt that bad, whatever he just. And so that's what that's why we're here to make sure that we can get a chance to stay open or to, to get back open or whatever. Has there been a lapse in service? In other words. I mean, would you say two or three weeks that where there's not been service, or is it kept well, on the entire time? In other words, maybe a few weeks that we were told not to move those trucks. So you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. They were. May I? Yes, ma'am. They were told not to move the trucks, but the trucks were trucks. You know, as I understand. I guess what, I, and to say it a better way, I, you know, I was trying to understand, which I, I agree with. What, uh, in other words, you never want to. You know, would never want, not want a department to, to function, in other words, but I know that there's been a lapse because I know we had already moved to other plans to try to get coverage down in that area, Columbus County or whatnot, but I, so I'm a little confused as to, so in other words, you are picking up the ball and want to get it going again, yes. in other words. Yeah. 
I heard you say that we don't, I think I am willing to give you what time you needed, but we still, I think, got to proceed with getting coverage. So if it's okay, we proceed with getting coverage down there and y'all keep working on your fire department when you get where you, you can function, you come back and I think we will cancel our contract and give it to you. Uh, and I appreciate that. And I also let the report you know that uh, the other fire departments in Bladen County, a lot of them have volunteered to come out and help us get home. Uh, we have people volunteering to come and check the truck. One man came out and said it's not the tanker that's leaking, but he thinks it's the pump. So it might just be a valve. So we got somebody coming out to check that. If that is the case, we will be as able um, equipment-wise as we've been. And we've got to get that going. I can't tell you tonight that we are able equipment-wise to, to get that pumper going. The other stuff, the fire truck is going. It's been, they say it's A1 shape. They've been checked out. So we are we are we are promising to do our best to have a viable fire department. We can't afford to lose anything else. And I think it's important too, ma'am, that if you said in your opening statement that you're willing to work with the fire marshal and emergency services, but in that also please ask and make sure that the equipment that they know is expected to be there that you have that equipment. Yeah. And the insurance the people say we're up to date, insurance wise. So insurance wise, we we'll, we'll. just come back when you got you when you're ready. Okay. How about that? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you so uh, much. It, it, it was heard, or, or I heard it, that our turnout gear was outdated, and, that, and a lady that used to order the gear for other fire. Uh, department. Departments say that stuff's supposed to last anywhere from 10 to 15 years. And we've got turnout gear that, if I can show you tonight, looks just as good as any in this county or anywhere else. So it, it's not 15 years old. So, um, like you said, we need to check what we got and get back with her. I thought it was tonight was the closing date, but. If we have to do our contract with other fire departments, you still got time. Okay, well, that's... And we'll take everything that's been said tonight in consideration. Thank you. 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 Minor events are good for me. Okay, Dr. Lingoyne. Oh, I just have uh, the one, the update on the Elwell Ferry. We see it's closed, but they still ask me, what's the update? I haven't seen anything. Mr. Clark uh, confirmed the information that we shared with you that it's supposed to, they've taken the actual ferry out for repairs, the necessary repairs that will enable them to obtain insurance coverage. And it's still, uh, still out. I'm not mistaken, it'll be sometime in early summer. But okay. May, 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 May. Yeah, May. May. Still, okay, that's still lit. I'll yeah, tell them. Okay. Right. That's still the last. And the second one, I've got some concerns because at the dumpster site in East Arcadia, oftentimes on a Monday when you go there like today, you can't drop your trash in the bin. So she has to help us have to go to brown goods. So they're not dumping it or not collecting it early enough for us. So it's a lot of trash. So I just have some complaints. I'm going to follow up on that. Thank you. Okay, um, just have a couple statements. Uh, I have observed some things and I have a couple questions. Um, the members of Mount Calvary uh, Conference for Leadership Development some time ago came before the commissioners. And they wanted us to support their, what they were doing a, um, a vaccine clinic at the fire department and they had paid incentives. And uh, some of the commissioners gave strong statements why the uh we should not support them they were not they were not asking for any funding or anything but the statements were we should not support them because they had a uh, paid incentive and then, and we had some real strong statements on that um 
Mr. Peterson gave one, and I'm Mr. Saying McGill, about, uh, we gave, yep. gave strong statements about that because of the paid incentives. And then a uh, motion came out to not support them for their what their action where they were taken. And the motion was passed not for the us to support them, the county. Then a second event came out January 27th, a blood drive came out and they had paid incentives. They paid incentives, a lottery, free t-shirts for donors. That was supported by the county. The county supported that. Now, both of these organizations had paid incentives. They came to play to assist our citizens due to medical reasons. Support was pr provided for one by the county, but not the other. So, Mr. Chairman, my main thing, when I saw that, what was the difference? My like response, since he brought my name up? Yes, Mr. Peters. My response is this, this Board of Commissioners voted not to support paying people to take vaccination. The blood drive we did not vote on, we, it was not brought to the Board of Commissioners. So that's the difference. But it was supported by the county, but the all the county commissioners. But we, we represent the county. So uh, you asked or not, so. Okay, I appreciate it, sir. But now it was supported by the county, the blood drive. They had paid incentives, had a lottery. Am I right, Mr. Martin? I'm not sure about that. Yeah, that's on it. I'll let you know. I mean, Mr. Chairman. We were contacted maybe two days before the date that they were hoping to locate in front. They were looking for a high visibility location and they asked if they could park near or around the courthouse and they parked out in, on Broad Street in front of the courthouse. Other than that, I don't know of any direct involvement that the county really had. I don't know if anybody else yeah, has. But uh, they, they, the clerk's name is on the flyer. Our clerk. I was on that mm -hmm. flyer, so we the county supported the blood drive Sign up. for signing up. Yeah, we. I mean, we certainly we did. But they had, they had, there's a shortage of blood, and yeah, area. I agree. Uh, so. I agree that, and I, I support both both actions. Okay. But what I'm saying though, yeah. paid incentives. Were, but both organizations had paid incentives. We supported one, but not the other. I think where the where the differences may be, Mr. Bullock, is blood versus the vaccine, I think people have differences of opinions more so. I think that's probably the best answer that I personally can give you um, without debating any of it because that's not, I don't think that's what we want to do. But I think that's the biggest difference, blood versus different opinions about the vaccine and, and paying to have it done. That's the best analogy that I can give. Okay. But, Comment. Yes, sir. The, the, the only thing I would comment on that, that sometimes when we do things here, you hear me kind of go with those issues and say, are we setting the precedent on what we're doing? And when we do things here on this board, they don't look at it that it's a blood drive or it's a incentive. The community looks at it, why is the difference between the two? And whenever we start singing out things like that, the community looks that's what you did for one group, you didn't do it for another group. And they don't understand the reason why. And but so when we set up this and set a president that we're gonna do something like this, it needs to be straight across the board. That's what I always say. If you're gonna do it, we need to be in a position to do it for everybody. So that is being equal, fair, and what's right. And we don't do it. If you do it the other way, you're doing it wrong. And, and Mr. Chairman, we just set the pledge, say, and in that pledge, we say justice for all. <laughs> Did we God. vote as commissioners to support a blood drive or to give incentives or to support no. them giving no. incentives? No. Okay. I was just making sure because I'm not. And I want to echo what Mr. Britt said. We, we had voted right prior to the Mount Calvary group coming about not. Uh, paying incentives at the time for you know, for the vaccines, we kind of felt like people ought to do that for a humanitarian cause. I, I agree with Mr. Martin. I don't know that anyone, my girls came back and were shocked when they talked about it, all three of them. Wow, they're paying for blood. I don't know that that was ever given or advertised quite, you know, in, in other words, it was a totally different scenario. Um, so, you know, as far as what Mike is saying, I mean, if we start setting precedent on every, you know, I, I just, I, I just 
don't know that's a good habit either. Now, but, now that blood drive was advertised on TV. As far as giving money? The whole thing, yeah. It never came to a vote. Yeah, we did. Right. Right. Never, right. right. never came. So, totally different. Never came to a vote. I mean, we should never have to right. vote on any other organization when they bring things in. Yeah. And, it, and the comment, the that you already said it, and so you allowed it for one, they don't have to ask, let me finish please, because they did not get permission, even though we endorsed it. We endorsed it when we put Ms. Edwards' name on it as their contact person. So that means we endorsed it. And so when you do that, then the next person or the next organization, when they ask um, support, they should not bring it to the county commissioners, but we'll come to Mr. Martin and ask you for assistance. That's all they need to do. But I don't think I don't, the captain. I don't see that as an endorsement either. Well, her name is on. I don't. I don't see that. It may not be. And I respect that. I, I, I respect I that. that. We disagree. Right, yeah. Okay. Easy. But my comment again, and please, okay. is that again we set the presence and trust me, I think both of them are health, welfare issues. Yeah. The pandemic, taking the vaccine, and we do need your blood. Either way, we need we need both of them. There's a choice in either one. I don't give blood. Military, a lot of people cannot give blood. So it's, I'm not gonna push blood, but I will push the vaccine because I think it's necessary. Any for blood, and I'll ask us to do the same thing. So I'm just saying, just be fair to everyone. Mr. Martin, that's a, that's always our goal. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I'm, I may be misunderstanding the, or not quite understanding the issue. My understanding with regard to the vaccine was that the county commissioners chose for the county not to compensate. That's correct. No, 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 no. no. They they to provide, okay. But the county didn't provide any, the, the county did not provide the funding for no, it, the it blood wasn't, drive or whatever. That, that really blood. wasn't even part of the, you're not the chairman. That wasn't even part of our thought process. <laughs> the right now. That mm -hmm. wasn't part of our thought process in <laughs> terms of, we were just trying to help facilitate, there's a shortage of blood in the, yeah, as you all know, we were trying to help facilitate the process that was under short a short time frame and hadn't dreamed about it causing such a you know such a concern. Sure. Well and before Mr. Peterson speaks again, let me reiterate again. It's just not the county that's had a division as far as the pandemic versus the vaccine. This has been a nationwide yeah. and global wide uh, yeah. Yeah. division. But I don't think you find that being the case with blood. That's what I want to emphasize, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, ain't a lot of what I'm going to tell you. It's, it's like apples and oranges. There's no comparison, Mr. Bullock. This Board of Commissioners voted not to engage in paying people to take vaccination. So when you you and a few commissioners, like y'all accuse me of all the time, go out and undermine a group to come yeah. in here and pay people, then that's, you're supposed to honor the wishes of these nine boards. If they voted to we do did. it. But we did. No, you don't let me finish. If you're going to, you're supposed to honor the nine board members' decision, whether you agree with it or not. And what y'all did was undermine what this board decided. We never never thought about the blood drive. It never come to us. When they call asking, they parked out there, they're going to put Marie's number on name on that thing because she's the contact person. They put my name on it, but they come to the Beast Fest. But if Ms. this one last thing, then we'll leave. Yeah. Ms. Ms. Peterson, I hear exactly what you said. And I heard is that what you crying to say? But when you deal with the public, we deal with the public, all the people in this community, not these nine board members. When we do something, it is the appearance of what this board does for the county. You're not doing it for Charles Ray. You're not doing it for Cogdale. We're doing it for the community. We're doing it for you. Let me bench. We're doing it for the community. And when you do something that gives that kind of impression, sometimes it sends a bad signal that you are doing things based on different criteria. If you're gonna do something across the board, why should you politicize it in any form or fashion? That's not our job to politicize health issues. That's not our job to politicize health issues. You said about life and death, life is annoying. People were dying from the pandemic, people were dying from the shortage of blood, mm -hmm. both of them. So don't tell me it's apples and oranges. The people are dying when you die, you're dead. Right. Don't make no difference. Commissions have nothing to do with it. Well, what I'm saying, you just, but you sitting here saying we should do this and shouldn't do that. Let's end this. I'm saying you're supposed to honor the wishes of this board. Let's end it with this. Let me make one comment in reference to that. When Mr. Comdale makes a statement that the community is seeing and hearing and 
You may be setting a bad example. Let me rephrase that or make uh, a comment in reference to that. Not for the ones that support the opposite of what you say. Okay. There's also a lot of people supported that you didn't take that stand. Okay? Right. Don't take a position you don't have to worry about. Right. You don't like it. That's their personal opinion. But we were asked to take a position. That's their personal opinion. And we took it. I don't give blood. No, I, don't I, I just want to say one thing. He said we were undermining what went on, you know. Uh, but I, I don't agree with that. But the only thing I, I was just concerned about is that the county supported one issue, and we used a subject in that issue of incentives when there was another uh, issue here, another service. The blood drive had incentives. The county supported that. And all of the means I have to think, what are we doing? Are we setting a standard? That some we would support, some we won't. What are we doing? And one, one last question, Mr. Attorney, what legal ramification uh, uh, by us switching back and forth? Is there any legal ramification in that? I mean, first of all, that's a good question. I mean, the board would like for me to look into that, and I'll be more than happy, but I'm not, it's just coming off the whim. I, 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 I'm, you know, we're going to look into that issue. All right, thank you, sir. From a legal standpoint, sure. I just want one last thing, non-controversial. I I think if ever in the T-shirt one that this particular blood drive did not come before the board like the other entities did, there's a big difference, and it did not because we didn't hear a thing in the world about it. The other, if the county has ever asked for a location placing again, let's put like in all other healthcare, and I've been doing it 25 years, let's put a disclaimer on there that they're gonna park out in front of the courthouse, but we don't necessarily support the blood drive or the paying of people to come be a recipient. That that would nullify any of our responsibility for it. Oh, in, in other words, you know, let's just and, and let that be our rule. Unless they wanna come before and ask our prayers for it, let's just take ourselves out of it. Because, you know. That should be something we need to talk about giving blood. I agree, but it's causing a lot of it. You just said that nine of us is one that the board should respect. We had to vote on it. You just said that nine of us respect. Now you're going to give it to the Trump? Give it to the manager? I am not going to put a restriction on the county manager if he gets a call for a blood money in a park out there in front of the dang courthouse. On this town property. Let's go on. Two portions of those views. That's the one we discussed. So, motion to approve. 
Second by Mr. Cogdale, second by Mr. Gillespie. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Mr. Clare. Thank you. Well, on water computation, Mr. Dean Morris. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening. sir. Mm -hmm. Mr. Albert Shaw here has had a dream for a while to put his land in a farmland preservation program. And I want him just to say a few words. Yes, sir. Thank you all for uh, considering this. Um, I wanted to put a large portion of my farm into this farmland preservation, really to uh, ensure that it's going to stay in my family, it's been in the family two, 200 years. I was just recognized as a bicentennial farm by the state of North Carolina. And uh, this conservation easement will keep it in agriculture, keep it in forest land for forever, and uh, and keep it together. It will be one one track, and I've set it up in a trust so it will stay in the family. And I just would ask the commissioners to uh, approve the county to hold the easement and the Soil and Water Conservation Board will administer uh, the uh, monitoring, make sure it remains in agriculture and not developed in any way. Um, we got a motion by Mr. Peterson, second by Mr. Cameron. Any further discussion? Mr. Cameron, you put in that 365 acres. So good size track of land, uh, Bernie Ford and Elkton Roads. He ranked second in the state, and this is our first of this kind in Blake County. That's and great. I tell you what, it is a uh, that filling out that application, and if that's uh, oh, we're not interested. <laughs> and a lot more. And before we take a vote, I personally want to thank you on behalf of the board members for making this decision and doing your property this way. We, we personally thank well, you. I do appreciate it. On behalf of the citizens as well, and I appreciate your support. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you, Ms. Shaw. Thank you so oh, much. And it won't cost the county anything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 When I've had some people who have contacted me about water standing in ditches, and they're saying that it's put to the right of way, like the state right of way, and then they're saying, they looking at guys with farmland and they're trying to figure out how to get the water off of it. Is there any restriction that you guys can't go and put a ditch in or clear out a, a canal running on private property? I just wonder what's the answer to that. No, what you can put ditches in. What we'll do, we'll do is uh, give you some technical advice to see if it will physically work. Okay. Uh, as far as funding goes, there could be funding to clean out something in existence. I'll look at it on an individual case. If it's on DOT right away, consult with DOT and, and anything that's done can be done at the landowner's expense with permission from DOT. Okay, but what they're saying is that DOT said they won't go with SOPA right. right away. Right. But then they need to hook the ditch up to go public mm -hmm. across some property. So they kind of figure out how you get that process. It's done. not likely, but let me look at it and determine that. Would they, would they need to call you? Yes, please call me. Okay. okay. Dr. Terry Duncan. I think tonight I get to be brief. <laughs> but the good news is we've gone in the last three or four weeks to having over a thousand active cases to right about 275, maybe a little less. We hope that by Wednesday we're approaching the 200 active cases. Um, we did add a death today for a total of 110 deaths. 14 since December the 20th. So over seven weeks, we averaged about two deaths a week related to COVID. We currently have a 31% positivity rating in Bladen County compared to a 19.3% in the state. State levels come down a whole lot quicker than the county level has come down. So we're continuing. Um, as we have suggest every day at the health department, they're out of rapid. Um, but they are doing PCRs, and by the way, only PCRs are reported on the state website, not the um, rapids. 
We continue, there are, there are several different places that you can get rapid testing in the county, but the free one, of course, is the PCR testing at the health department. We are giving vaccines Monday through Friday still at the health department. Received word late Friday that the FDA is expected to meet soon for the zero five um, age group. We will be receiving a of doses. That is the plan right now. So um, we will be ready to give the vaccines to that age group. We currently stand at a 72% first time dose and a 62% second dose. That is as of January the 7th, North Carolina DHHS worked with the CDC. With counties that were bordering or had um, veterans affairs, prisons, and um, some other entities, there was an increase. We were one of 15 counties that received an increase in the vaccination rate. Bladen had the highest at 19%. There were a few counties that had a decrease. Our goal has and continues to be to vaccinate every person that wants the vaccine, whether it be a first, a second, a booster, or what comes um, down the line. And that's what I have. To I just have. I just have one comment because I've gone through the line. A lot of folks complained, have made comments about it. Um, I can say thank you to your staff. They do an awesome job. I know sometimes that line is long, but at the same time, it's moved. It's growth. So I thank you and thank you all your staff. Mr. I just got a question. You may can answer this. Uh, we received some home tests. Hadn't opened the boxes yet, so, but uh, it's do we have to, if, we, if I take a test at home, do I have to record it somewhere? No, sir. Wow. That's why the positive tests are PCR tests. They're not in-home tests. Okay, okay. Now, um, has COVID-19 has uh, any kind of uh, negative impact on our jail? We have had some clusters and some cases there, but as far as other counties and, and other states, it hasn't impacted. We've had a lot of staff, we've had, and we have had cases amongst our inmates there, but it not compared to some other places. All right, thank you. How many clusters do you have all active right now? Because we had, we, I know three for a while. We've got several schools, some long-term care. We, we've got cases throughout. Thank you. Advisor Board Appointments and Joint Care Home Community Advisory Committee 1, Aaron Henson. Aaron Henson. Aaron Henson. Second. Aaron Henson. 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 Aaron George Waters and John Allen's place. Okay. Okay. I mean, you can make a motion. We just need to remove George. I mean, a John and put George there. I mean, the motion to accept um, his, his suggestion. Okay. A motion by Dr. Mungo under second. By Mr. Bullock, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, make sure you take a look at February 21st.
White Lake Chamber annual meeting will take place. So I just want to remind you of that. My understanding is that will be an evening meeting, but if we have some more details, we'll share that with you. And the board meets the 21st at Mr. Martin, can you, what meeting are you saying in March? The Elizabeth Town, the White Lake. The Elizabeth Town White Lake Area Chamber meeting. Oh. On the 10th, Thursday the 10th. Okay. No questions regarding the calendar moving to item B. I'd like to ask your consideration of approving the extension of the audit contract. The plan is for it to be submitted to the LGC either the like this week or next week, and then uh, Mr. Brian Scott plans to present it to the board at the next meeting on the 21st. You still be in with yeah. No, it is. <laughs> well, okay. Well, we'll go ahead and approve. We'll go ahead and approve. Got a motion on the Senate, mm -hmm. Mr. Peterson, a second by Mr. Gillespie or Mr. Hester. Right, Any further discussion? I just got a question on that, uh, yes. Mr. Martin. I remember a while back a long time. We was looking at all this thing. Is it that Thompson and Price and Scott is the only one that we have that's feasible, or do we change that? Remember one time was a discussion about yeah, well, every having three, a different uh, like who can get it up. Every three or four years, we we do an RFQ, a request for qualification, or maybe a request for proposals, okay, and so that's the agency that the board is or the audit. Okay, I didn't know they have done it consistently. For the last eight years, I know yes, it's been this guy. I know it was like we were looking at something different. Like, well, we'll see. I mean, again, it'll be time to, I'm not sure exactly where we are in the, the term, but at uh, the appropriate time, we'll, uh, then we'll do the RFP and bring that information to you for your approval. Okay, because the only reason, only reason I bring it up, I know it, we had a discussion that I made years ago that he targets certain things, and if you don't add specifics, he may not see it, but if someone else come in, they may look at something different than he looks at, and you get a variation of some of the things. That was the reason for change. I remember we talked about that. Yes, sir. And like I said, we're on the schedule um, of doing that and bringing it to you for approval. So whatever you, okay, whatever no, you no, decide to choose is certainly something you No, No problem. I remember that was something that we talked about. Back I, I, yeah, a I while back. You remember we had that conversation about it. We may have already done another. We've probably done another term since then. That's what I'm trying to do. Has someone look at that with different perspective? Okay. That's a pleasure, Board. That's an action item. On C. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next item I want to bring to your, to your consideration is the strategic plan. As you all know, that's been a one process over the course of the past year. There have been so many folks in our community who have played an important role in the development of this plan. I want to thank them. Um, you all have worked hard on it as well. So I certainly do thank you for, first of all, for taking the initiative to begin the process and then seeing it through to the, to the development of this plan, which really is the beginning of the where the work will start. So um, we're excited to move forward, beginning to implement the aspects that are identified in the plan. Uh, as you all know, I'll just briefly review, we, we uh, have developed a new vision statement as part of this process. We have a mission statement, our values. Um, six focus areas have been identified. Environment and agriculture, healthy community, prosperous economy, quality education, safe and prepared community, and community infrastructure, housing, and transit. And so, with each of those focus areas, uh, we've identified goals and priorities and performance measures and that type of thing. So, Pleasure, board. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Motion by Mr. Gillespie, a second by Mr. Cameron. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Mr. Martin. Thank you. Individual delegation wish to address the commissioners. Matter of answers to commissioners. I've got one. That's very much. I guess, but this is, this is the director, kind of manager. Just watching on the on the AR thing that we're going to have on, on, on Thursday or Thursday, right? Yes, sir. And 
I know we had a public, so hope we be time. Did we ever take a get any kind of feedback from any type of community input as to how the community did that spend the money? Did we ever do anything on that nature? That stamp? I'm trying to figure out when we get ready to do this tomorrow, you can can you bring us all the information that we have collected on how this money should be spent if there have been any desires from the community department heads or whatever. Sorry. That, that's been shared with you, but we'll have to begin. Yeah. Because I didn't know whether or not we had had a, you know, yeah. a, a, a survey from the community asking how this money should be spent. Like, I know. Did we do anything of that? We had, a, well, we had a public, we had, that like you said, we had a, a national public meeting, hearing um, when we reviewed it, and we had a room that was pretty pretty well okay. full. And then at a later date, the board scheduled a public hearing. So I, I feel like the county's been very deliberate in our approach to uh, soliciting feedback from the city. But you can bring all that information to us? Certainly, yes. yes. I'll be thirsty. And that'll be thirsty. That's what I'm saying. Let's make sure we have it so we won't be overlooking it. There's, there's a sixth floor. Right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, a few months ago, we there was a proposal and we, we turned it down to purchase a piece of property next to the Board of Elections. And since then, I've, I've, I've take that route quite often. And it looks like you know, the fire department now looks so nice and you come and the courthouse has kind of had a facelift and the county buildings, you know, a lot look pretty nice. But that's kind of an eyesore. I hadn't really thought about it. Um, there's a dumpster sitting out front. It's you know, and that's one of the first places people come if they're moving to Bladen County. They go there, and you know, it's kind of a bad first impression. Um, and I look, there's now two pieces of property. One that's behind the Board of Elections. Talk to Mr. Martin. Um, at one point, we at the county actually rented space for parking and for the dumpster to sit there. And then uh, there were some issues, so the dumpster's now been moved, and it's kind of what you see when you look at the Board of Elections. But anyway, and then there's a piece of property to the side. And I don't know, you know what the desire of the board would be, but maybe just to at least have Mr. Martin to kind of look into the feasibility of, you know, possibly purchasing both of those pieces of property and kind of giving us a little bit of buffer around one of our county owned buildings. Maybe beautify it just a little bit, uh, make it, you know, a little safer, people coming in and out. Maybe not, you know, you walk out the door and the cars are there. Um, you know, I don't know how that is all used during you know, voting times as far as the campaigning and all, but just to make it a little bit more of an appealing looking place um, than what it is right now. Right now we can buy those two pieces of property fairly reasonable, but you know, who knows if they get sold and somebody does something else then, and who knows that may not always be the offices of the Board of, Ele of, the Board of Elections. It could be something else one day. And if the property is not available, then you're kind of stuck with that small little footprint. There's no additional parking. Um, I know there's a church for sale in the middle of E-Town and they can't sell it because there's no parking. And so that building kind of becomes stuck as a very limited use, you know, usefulness without additional parking. So again, I don't have a dog in the fight. I just, it's a, it's a sale now, yeah. the lot to the right is for sale and then the lot behind is for sale. Um, so it would give you, I don't know the, the footage, but it would give you, instead of that little bitty block, you would have a buffer around you. Um, I'll be honest with you serving on that board 15 years we really never had a need for it while i was there because the price of it was so astronomical <laughs> yeah, that's right that's, uh, that's what i'm saying and who knows what you know, if it could be bought i mean they hadn't sold it's not i don't believe it's going to sell to anybody else but uh so you know it would if it was something we could get very very reasonably it would only make sense for us to have it again it might not always be the board of elections is my thought one thing I, I wanted to follow up and ask about highway cleanup uh, just recently. In other words, it seemed like it had gotten a lot better. And then recently, of course, I know how the year I know how the year goes by, and we get into summertime and winter. I didn't know like what was going on now in regard to if there are any DOT programs happening with the uh, cleanup or not. I didn't know. I was just I'm not trying to ask one person. I just was kind of making it just. Something I've been observing. I didn't know if there was it's our land issue. Um, yeah. As you all know, the sheriff and, and uh, Kip and Mr. McCleary, they developed a program several years ago, and uh, they were I think they were making good progress. In the oh yeah. But as COVID, COVID hit, then our uh, state inmates that they were using for that program declined to a very small number. Up, I just heard the sheriff say a couple of weeks ago that they had very very few. So they just don't have the 
inmates to be able to send out on that. Okay, but I'll follow up this. Is, is this the time. sheriff still doing his trip? No, because they don't have the staff. They don't have staff. They don't have the inmates to send. I look at the highways, they don't turn back. Yes, they have. Yep. And, and well, that's what I'm saying. I, and I don't mean it as a sore spot. I'm just saying it just it no, is what it is. It's just a client you call DOT contract for cleanup on Highway 87 and Highway 701. That's all true. Right? <laughs> no, I, I did have a general question too. Are we going to get new signs for the? They are on the. the those, I got you. Uh, DOT now has a. Basically, a standard template like one or three yeah. options. I thought Wake do. Counties looked snazzy, and then when we tried to do ours, it's kind of like, no, we can't. You know, that's right. We're but they're on the order, and, and DOT yeah. actually puts the signs up. Last, you know, 20 years ago, we did okay. them. Uh, our folks went out and put them up. Now, DOT develops and builds them, installs them, does everything. So the new, the green, welcome county to Blake signs, County. Welcome to Blake County. County. Oh, okay. Yeah, we wanted to. Yeah. Mr. Mark. Yes. I think it'd be appropriate, and I would think other commissioners would appreciate this, that if we sent a letter to our legislators and our Congress, that you know a lot of money is put in the budget for a lot of things, and I don't know of many things that's more important than the visibility and the viewing of our property within the state, especially our county, and that we would like them to push that matter and share our concerns, because we've been discussing this for years, because we catch the heat and the People think it's our responsibility on the state highways, and it's the state's, but we take the heat. And sometimes it's hard to explain, especially for me, but we would like to share that burden to them because they're in a position to do something about it versus we are not. We'll be glad to update the date on our last letter we sent. What quarters are they? I mean, I know you do now. It's 701 and 87. Yeah, but yeah, we'll we'll be glad to add that one. Next time you talk to Mr. Clark, could you thank him for the lights that are set up around the roundabout? It has really brightened it up. I know they still had a roundabout tractor trailer accident. I will. Couple weeks I understand ago. they also are going to be working on a proposal. I was telling the chairman this afternoon to, been, to mm -hmm. light the interchange at 701 and 87. I'm saying again? 701 and 87 bypass, which would be really, you know, that's about where they're No, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right across there. It's really they need to redesign that. They they shafted us on that design. You <laughs> cannot come across that thing and you'll cross the road. You never seen the I mean, they've done all that work on 87, and then you have to cross traffic to go one way or another. That's the craziness. You can't get out there without spending $13 million. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to bring it. You get a motion to adjourn. Yeah. Now, it might not be our responsibility, but the. Uh, the bathroom fixtures at the East Town Middle School, you can't turn the water off. You just throw the run. So um, I, I mentioned that to the principal today. But uh, also, the bathroom fixtures at, at East Blade need to be repaired. And like I said, it might not be our responsibility, but I want to bring it out. And the, and the gym at the East Town Middle School, needs, that needs to be repaired. The floor needs to be repaired. I just want to bring that up. Thank you. Motion adjourned. Yes. Yes. Second. 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 By Mr. Danny Ellis. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Good night, everybody. Thank you. One day.